Evil Crushinators of Doom was the second set released for the Duel Masters trading card game. The introduction of powerful evolution creatures changed the entire dynamic of the game and opened up the playing field for the introduction of new decks. Tournaments started picking up around the release of Evo Crushinators, and a true metagame began to develop for the first time. While blue-green Evo decks became the clear front runners early on, a large variety of decks saw play in tournaments. In this series, both Michael and myself will be taking you on a journey through time. Each episode we will look at a time in Duel Masters past, showcasing the evolution of the metagame as new sets are released. Using real decks from that time, we will play a best 2 out of 3 match to relive the game as it once was. This is the history of Duel Masters. Alright, we're back again with another episode of the History of Duel Masters series, and you'll see things are a bit different this time around. So last week, we had all five civilizations on this wheel, and whatever civilizations we spun, that was what determined like what colors we were using in our deck. For this episode, uh, this is when there actually start to have been like tournaments for Duel Masters. People were posting deck lists online. So we have a bit more to go off of as far as like what the actual meta was at this time. And so by scouring around like old Pojo posts, tournament deck lists, etc, etc, uh, these are seven sort of archetypes that Ben and I identified that were common and were played around this time. Uh, and so obviously whatever we spin on the wheel is the deck type we're going to play. Because we won the match last week, we actually get two respins to help us get potentially the deck that we want to play for this week. I will just briefly say a bit about like each of these decks. So first we have Light Water Control. It uses water for like card draw and bounce spells to keep creatures off the board and then Crystal Lancer for finishers while using uh, basically the big light blockers to try and stall out the game until that point. Next, Fire Darkness Rush. This is basically really cheap fire and darkness creatures trying to end the game quickly. Next, we have Liquid Beast Evo. So this is a water nature, like mid-range tempo deck, and it's using the really powerful Liquid People and Beast Folk evolutions from this set, Crystal Lancer and Fighter Dual Fang, to just try and accelerate into those cards quickly and then overwhelm the opponent before they have time to respond. Diamond Cutter, this is basically, uh, I believe the list we have are Mono Light, although I guess it doesn't have to be, but basically running a lot of blockers to stall out the game and then try to win the game using Diamond Cutter. A Water Dark Control, uh, it's just a control deck with darkness and water. The water, uh, again, gives Crystal Lancer as a finisher while also giving card draw. Darkness gives you access to hard removal like Death Smoke and Terror Pit, as well as hand control like Horrid Worm or Ghost Touch. Fire Water Tempo, this is an uh, aggressive fire water deck that's using like cheap fire creatures as well as some of the bounce spells from water that were highlighted in the last episode to try and close the game quickly while using like spiral gates and such to keep your opponent's creatures off the board. And then lastly, uh, Destroy Em All is basically a control deck that's running as many hard removal effects as possible. It's Fire Darkness Nature. Uh, and it's just trying to use all these hard removal effects to keep your opponent's creatures off the board and build up an advantage that way and eventually find a way to close the game. I would really like to play either this Water Nature Evolution deck or Water Dark Control, or maybe Fire Water Tempo, actually. I think those decks are a bit of a cut above the other ones. But anyways, let's just spin and see what we get. We do have two respins, so if we spin something we really don't want, we can just respin. We've got Fire Water Tempo here. Yeah, I think I'm fine with this actually. We're gonna play Fire Water Tempo. Now we're coming into Evil Crushinators of Doom. Now this set drastically changed the metagame because we are introducing the evolution creatures for the first time. These evolution creatures are some of the strongest in the game, and not only that, it enables the ability to summon a creature, evolve on top of it right away, and then get your attacks in. This is kind of the first time that you can ever just start attacking from no creatures on the field in one turn. Now, there were a lot of decks that were running around at this time, 
and we put a lot of them onto this wheel. Because I lost the first episode, that means I can only re-spin the wheel one time, whereas Michael gets to spin the wheel twice. So whatever I get, I can re-spin it, and if I don't like my second spin, I have to play that deck in today's episode. Now some of these decks are tournament winning decks, some of them are just decks that people played. So we're gonna try to go for one of those tournament winning decks and try to pick up a win to enable us some respins. What am I hoping for? Probably Liquid Beast Evo. That was kind of what dominated the metagame. We're talking about Crystal Lancers and Fighter Duel Fangs, some of the strongest evolutions ever printed, and they're already running around. It's just such a good pressure deck. Other than that, I think Water Dark Control is pretty good, and uh, I think Diamond Cutter would be fun. Everything else is just kind of a little weird and kind of gimmicky, so we're gonna try to stick at these three right here. Can we get them? Let's find out. Let's spin this wheel. What are we gonna get? Come on, Liquid Beast! And what is that? Water Dark Control. You know what? I'll take it. I'm not gonna risk a respin on this because this is pretty darn good. Okay, so here's the deck list we're taking to today's episode. I am basing this off of a deck list Ben found through some Duel Masters booklet that he has. And what that deck list is, it's basically like an example deck list for this archetype. Um, and so I have made a few changes to that deck list. In particular, I've added Armored Blaster Valdios, which is a powerful fire evolution that we can use for all of our cheap humans in the deck. I do think it's reasonably good to just have this as a finisher in the deck. And also, uh, I think this honestly might be more realistic as far as what people were playing, because my memory of Duel Masters around this time was that there were tons of people clamoring to play Armored Blaster Valdios. That was a really popular card back in the day. But so anyways, here's the deck. The plan is pretty simple. We want to leverage our cheap fire creatures to swarm the board early, and then use our water bounce spells in order to keep Ben from playing his creatures to the board. And you saw already how that general sort of game plan can be really powerful in last week's episode. And now we've got even more tools at our disposal with which to do it. We have four Deadly Fighter Braid Claw. Um, at this point in Duel Masters, this is the only one drop. Or actually, no, maybe we have Mero who's the Twister at this point. But uh, Deadly Fighter Braid Claw, at least, is the only one drop that can attack and won't sacrifice itself after the attack. So that's something. Next, we've got a series of two drop humans, which are both just aggressive creatures that we can use to pressure our opponent with and they all evolve into Armored Blaster Baldios. Uh, we have four Immortal Baronvorg, four Brawler Zyler, and two Mini Titan Get. Mini Titan Get was actually quite popular. I think the fact that it's forced to attack means this one isn't quite as good as the other two, even if it does have a better stat line than Vorg or Brawler Zyler. But uh, this is the spread we're going with. Next, we have two Aqua Vehicle. This is just another aggressive creature, and we are running a one of Crystal Paladin here, so this gives us a few more liquid people in order to support that. For Aqua Hulkus, I don't know what there is to say about this card that we haven't already said, but it's insanely good, draws a card, and it's a liquid people for Crystal Paladin. We do have one Hyper Squid Walter here. This is 3 mana, 1000 power. Whenever it attacks, you may draw a card. And we are hopefully going to be able to be attacking with it a lot, especially because we have these bounce spells to like sort of protect it by removing the creatures that could potentially kill this in return on Ben's turn. But so, and this can hopefully just keep drawing us cards and ensure that the gas keeps flowing. It is only a one of because Aqua Hulk is is just better, but I still think it's nice to have this one copy of it. Next we have four Unicorn Fish, insanely good in this type of deck, four mana, play it and bounce one of your opponent's creatures, and hopefully in this deck we've already got a lot of pressure built up by this point, and this should just be the final nail in the coffin to ensure that we can win. Uh, we do have three Armored Blaster Valdios here, really, really cheap Double Breaker. Also, the fact that uh, we can play, say, a uh, Mini Titan Get into this in one turn means we have something that can like function as a speed attacker, which is really good. Also, the fact that this is 6,000 power means it goes over Bark Whip the Smasher and Crystal Paladin, which in this meta could be quite relevant. 
Uh, so just all around very good aggressive finishing card here. One Crystal Paladin. This is here because if we find ourselves in some really, really stalled out game, in general, this deck doesn't do well in long games. But if we have Crystal Paladin, this can give us some way to like cheese out a win in the super late game if Ben is like swarming the field with blockers. For Coral, this card is insane. Five mana, 2,000. When you play it, put a card in the battle zone on top of your opponent's deck. Realistically, in a deck like this, this is just a more expensive unicorn fish. Obviously, putting a card on top of their deck is better than in their hand, but realistically, we're not going for a card advantage sort of game plan anyways, so this just functions similarly to unicorn fish in a build like this. Then in the spells, we have four spiral gate and three teleportation. Again, just more bounce spells to keep our opponent's creatures off the board and ensure that we can clear the way for our creatures to swing in for game. So yeah, that's the deck. Uh, I'm really hopeful that we can bring a win home with bounce two weeks in a row. Let's just hop into the games and see what happens. So this is what a typical Water Darkness control deck looked like back in 2004 in Evil Crushinators of Doom. Now these decks tended to split one of two directions, which was either lean a little bit into like the Parasite Worms to get Chaos Worm, or lean a little bit heavier into Liquid People and use Crystal Lancer as a finisher. The build I decided to do was focusing on the Chaos Worms. Now this build is based on a deck by Lee Sando, who won a local in Georgia back in 2004 with this deck. Now I did change up a few cards just for personal preference, but pretty much the gist of the deck is the exact same thing. Use water to draw cards, use darkness to kill cards, and win the game. Our blocker lineup is going to be 3 Hunterfish and 4 Bloody Squido. I think Hunterfish is actually the better blocker at this point in time, just because there's not really that much that like the 4,000 power difference really matters, like nobody's really playing cards with exactly 4,000 power. If Hunterfish can beat it in a block, Bloody Squido can beat it. The reason I went for more Bloody Squidos was just simply to make the even split between Water and Darkness a little bit closer to 50-50. Uh, we're using 4 Aquahulkus of course, just to draw out a lot of cards. 4 copies of Horrid Worm, because we need the Parasite Worm Evo Bait, as well as it's really good to just put pressure on people in the early game, discard out their hand, as well as very good against Rush decks, because you can use this to start killing their weenies and also pop a card from their hand, which is pretty sick. God, it's been so long since I played Core Isle. In the progression series, I couldn't really get to use it very well, but now look at me, I finally have four copies, so it feels pretty good. One of the most broken cards in the game, and that just really helps this deck shine, and just get huge advantage on the board. By just sending a card from the, the battle zone to the top of the owner's deck, setting them back in the field, and denying them the next card they would have drawn from the top of their deck. Now we only have four Parasite Worms through the four copies of Horrid Worm, but Chaos Worm should be consistent enough to warrant playing two copies of it. Uh, its effect is just really powerful, and 5,000 power is not too bad. You can just evolve Horde Worm into this, pop something, and then attack a tapped creature, and it's just a huge swing in your favor. Because I decided not to go for Crystal Lancers, I am using Zagan Knight of Darkness as my finisher, and one copy of Aqua Sniper just in case we get to the late game. It's also the kind of card where you don't really want to draw it in the early game, so I didn't really want to be playing more than one. Four copies of Spiral Gate, because like we saw in Episode 1, Bounce is pretty darn good right now, even though it's a little bit nerfed with the introduction of Evos. Brain Serum to draw more cards, Crystal Memory to search out what we need. This is going to help keep our one of Aqua Sniper consistent, as well as make it a little bit easier to play uh, Evolutions while only having four Evo baits. Two copies of Death Smoke, just good removal. Teleportation, remove two things. We saw how good this could be as well. And finally, four Terror Pits because we get Shield Trigger to destroy any creature. Cannot complain with that. Now, Water Darkness is the kind of deck that was really powerful back in Evo Crushinators, but it did get a little bit stronger later on down the road when we got access to Emerald, which unlocks playing uh, Illusionary Merfolk more consistently. But even without the Illusionary Merfolk, I think we should be pretty consistent, and it's just a pretty strong deck overall. Let's see what Michael rolled, and let's duel. Welcome back everybody to episode number two of the History of Duel Masters. Today we have moved into Evo Crushinators of Doom. How is this going to change the landscape of the duels today, do you think, Michael? Um, well, it depends a bit what we spun on the wheel, quite honestly, but in general, I, I mean, this set was huge as far as the metagame is concerned. I mean, I guess with the second set, you're like, 
doubling the size of the card pool, so maybe it's not that yeah. surprising. Well, base I mean, set actually got... had 120. Evil Crush and had 60. Oh, right, you're right. But, it, I mean, we've got evolution creatures now, which is just mechanically is a huge change, and, I mean, for this period in Duel Masters, they're also, like, pretty good cards. Yeah, they're, they're so... pretty good cards, and also, on top of that, there actually is a metagame for the first time. Also that. that like, we, there's crazy. actual tournaments. We could actually go back through the book that we uncovered, and, like, we get to find the rarest old tournament-winning <laughs> decks that people forgot about. And we're yeah, going to show them, bring them to light in 2022. The, like, these decks haven't seen light in nearly 20 years. And here we are about to play them for your viewing pleasure today. Are you ready to play some Evo Crushinators of Doom? I was born ready, Ben. All right, good. That's what I like to hear. All right, then without further ado, let's roll the dice and see who gets to go first. Three, two, one, roll. Oh, oh I won the roll. God, let's go. Let's... All right. Uh, actually, do I want to go first or second? I feel like I should go first. It, it feels way better at this point in time. Um, yeah, I'm going to go first. Is, did we successfully arrange a mirror match twice in a row? God, that would be impressive because that was a pretty big wheel. All right. Well... I mean, you'll be the first one to know if there is a mirror match for sure. But I guess this card would have been in in a couple decks. We're gonna put Aqua Sniper to mana, and we're gonna end the turn. Oh, I don't think there's any mirror matches to be had here, as it turns out. Oh, thank out. God. Okay. Here yep. Comes yep. Deadly okay. Yep. Brain Claw. There he is. He, we he love is, to see he's it. He's hungry for some shields, Ben. Uh, he is hungry, but how hungry is he? Let's put that to mana. That's gonna okay. give away something. We're gonna run out a blocker. Go ahead. All right, that's fair. At least it's one that dies when it battles, because yeah, otherwise I... my <laughs> deadly fighter would not be looking so hot. Right, well, we'll send Coral to the mana zone. I kind of had a feeling you were gonna go for this deck, but I don't know how many respins you used. This was my first spin. Oh, this impressive. This actually okay. wasn't. This was like. If I were to pick a deck, I wouldn't have picked this one, but this was in the sphere of, like, decks I was okay with. Yeah, that's reasonable. Uh, anyways, Deadly Fighter has to attack. We're gonna go into shield one. Don't uh, know gonna... if you're gonna block or not. I'm gonna take my chances that uh, you're not gonna remove this, and I wanna save it. Alright. So I will take it. And go ahead. I will draw. I don't feel like I will be needing Brain Serum anytime soon. And we are gonna run out in Aquahulkus. Right. End, end of the turn. Aquahulkus is the strongest card on the board, which feels pretty nice. We'll send Unicorn Fish to mana. Oh, he's back. He's back, the Unicorn Fish. <laughs> we'll, we'll play another Deadly Fighter yep. Braid Claw. Um, Deadly Fighter, the other one, will go at shield two. Okay, I will once again take it. Okay, so this, this is gonna die anyways. So, like, I don't think I lose much else by attacking with Aqua Vehicle also. Okay, I mean, so it Aqua is a Liquid Vehicle People. Going. Yeah, it's a Liquid People, and you could be playing Evos, so I will block that one. Okay, and go ahead. All right, let's draw. The other Chaos Worm doesn't feel great. We're gonna run out two blockers. Oh, no. And we're gonna kill the, the Deadly Fighter. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. I feel pretty comfy with my blockers right now, but I mean, there's that deck. I mean, I'm looking, I'm staring down. The unicorn fish is right there. Yeah, well, I mean, all my bounce is in my mana zone as it turns out. Uh, we'll play unicorn fish. Bounce the blocker that doesn't die. Yeah, that makes sense. Deadly fighter is going to go in. Do I want to block that? I mean, you're holding one card. I don't think I do want to block that. I'll, I'm going to take it. All right. Um, uh, no trigger. Uh, go ahead. Let's draw. Terror Pit to mana. We are gonna run back out the Hunter Fish, and we're gonna just kill the Deadly Fighter. All right, sure. Go ahead. I know Unicorn Fish doesn't have any Evos to be worried about, so with uh, one card in your hand and I have two blockers, I feel pretty decent. Oh, I'm gonna pass. All right, I will draw a card. I'm gonna play Spiral Gate to mana. I'm gonna run out the Zagan Knight of Darkness. That's not a bad one. You passing makes me feel like you have some kind of removal that just doesn't help you that much when you have just a unicorn fish, so I feel like he might get removed. We will send Spiral Gate to mana, and we okay. will play Deadly Fighter Braid Claw and end the turn. Interesting. 
Very interesting. Um, I'm not sure what to think right now. Maybe you have teleportation in hand and you're gonna try to clear my two blockers? Yeah, we're gonna do this. It's kind of a weird one. I'm gonna core aisle. All right. Now the deadly, the thing is like the deadly fighter has to attack. So I kind of like want to get rid of the unicorn fish instead, but then I'm just giving you bounce. <laughs> I am sitting on blockers, so it doesn't feel too horrible either way. We're gonna do it on the deadly fighter. That's All fine. right. We're gonna pay two more for another blocker. Uh, Zagan, Knight of Darkness is actually gonna go in and double break. All right, oh, that's good. And then Aqua Hulkus is gonna go in and single break. Oh, that's good too. And I will end the turn. I can't believe like it, people forget about this era when Zagan, Knight of Darkness is actually a good card. <laughs> oh, for sure. Well, right, mini Titan get is going to the mana zone. Uh, we will play Deadly Fighter Braid Claw. Okay. And we will play Teleportation. Okay. We want to bounce. I was kind of expecting the teleportation. Uh, definitely the Zagan, and it doesn't seem to want to let me target. All right. Well, I'll just bounce it then. So teleportation, you get one more. Yeah, we're gonna do the Hunter Fish. Okay, so Zagan and Hunterfish return to my hand. Yes, and are you gonna attack with the Unicorn Fish? Uh, no. Go ahead. <laughs> then I will draw. I'm gonna put this again to mana. All right. I don't need him anymore. We're gonna play six, and we're gonna Terror Pit the Unicorn Fish. Okay. <laughs> Which it doesn't feel great, but I mean, I I feel pretty good about this uh, Aquahulkus and Coral doing doing their thing when I have three blockers. So we're gonna keep the pressure on. Aquahulkus breaks shield too. Yep, that's good. And then Coral's gonna break the last shield. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh, no triggers. Nope. You, you think you think this deck does something uh, cowardly like playing shield oh, triggers? I mean, I'm lucky. No. I'm staring down a spiral no. gate in your mana zone. All right. Well, this feels bad. <laughs> but uh, we're gonna play Immortal Baron Vorg. Okay. And we're going to uh, teleportation your two attackers. Yeah, that does feel not great. <laughs> so, Coral, Aquahulkus, get returned. All right. So, Deadly Fighter is going to attack, and you know they say blocking is for cowards. But... No, no, no. Hunterfish is all about that blocking life. I'm going to block uh, that. If you insist, all right. Deadly Fighter is going to go to the graveyard, and you can go ahead. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. I'm going to, uh, surprise, surprise, Core Isle the Vorg, and uh, we're gonna run out the Aquahulkus and I'll end the turn. <laughs> I don't know what your deck can do, except like delay with more teleportations. Can play Immortal Baron Vorg and teleportation your two attackers. <laughs> that is what my deck can do. All right. Go ahead. Eventually, this is gonna this is gonna work. We're right. we're gonna scoop them up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because we're out of teleportations, unfortunately. You do get the advantage of choosing first we're, or second. We're gonna though. go first this game. Which yeah, that feels pretty good when you're playing uh, a deck like that going first. I hit roll die instead of set up battle zone. Oh yeah, you don't want to do that. Right. I mean, and if you want me to try never... to do that. This never happened in the progression series, but we've got the turn one Deadly oh. Fighter Braid Claw. I go ahead. do not like to see that. All right, Aquahulkus to mana, go ahead. Glad there's no Marine Flower. Yeah, not this time, not this time. There definitely was Marine Flower in one of the Water Darkness yeah, builds I, I that won a local, that. but I did not use that deck. Uh... Aqua Vehicle to Mana, we'll play Immortal Baron Vorg. Oh, here comes the pressure. Deadly Fighter's going in. Yep, he gets it. Go ahead. I'll draw. Horrid Worm to Mana for... Play it. There we go. Bloody Squeedo. That's not Hunterfish. That thing's gonna die if it blocks. Yeah, I, I wish it was Hunterfish. He will send Teleportation to Mana. Run out an Aqua Hulkus. Deadly Fighter will go... I guess, I guess we want to go in with Immortal Baron Borg first, actually. Okay, I, I will block that one. Okay, and Deadly Fighter will go in. Yep. Go ahead. Oh, uh, this is gonna be fun. Uh, uh, Coral to mana. Yeah, we we run out the Aqua Hulkus. Try and run out a creature that's. I I know what's coming. I know what's coming. So just <laughs> Unicorn Fish. Deadly Fighter to mana. May as well get mana. my draw. 
for tap in four for unicorn. Yeah. Ah, uh, focus is bounced. Focus is right. going in. Shield triggers. Oh, it's brain serum. Just I'm what not, I needed. More I'm cards in hand. I'm not too sad about you going from a seven card to a nine card hand when you have less than half that amount of mana. Yeah. Deadly fighter goes in and go ahead. Yeah. All right, we're gonna play and a game right go. now. A very, uh, a very fun game. You know All what right. that game is? What is it? That game is called "Please Don't Teleportation My Hunterfish Army." Go ahead. Oh. I do not have the teleportation. However, actually, we're sending armored. Oh, okay. Baldios so you do have that. the Baldios. But yeah, so we'll tap five for Coral. Yeah, that still doesn't feel great. Uh, deadly fighters going in. Yeah, I'm just gonna block it every time I can. I think. Sure. Uh, Aqua Hulkus is going in. Yeah, yeah, you got it. <laughs> and unicorn fish. Right. Oh, my hunter Jeez, fish army geez. couldn't. I do get to go first for this second game, which I, I am happy about. That is true. I'm gonna put Crystal Memory to mana and I'll end my turn. I don't think there's anything I need to be searching. We'll probably like to see this. We're gonna send Aqua Hulkus to That's... mana and end. I just see the color blue. That's all I see. <laughs> yep, yep. It feels good when you're running out blockers before there's anything to block. Oh, for sure. We'll send Brawler Zyler to mana, and we'll play Aqua Vehicle, and yep. we will end there. Now, you did show that you're not afraid to play Evos, so, like, the fact that this is an Aqua Vehicle makes me believe you could have Crystal Paladin chucked in there as well. We're gonna put Brain Serum to mana, and we're gonna run out another Bloody Squeedo. Go ahead. Alright. Okay, we'll send Spiral Gate to mana. We will play an Aqua Hulkus, and... I think you can go. All right. I don't want to trade right now or give you another card. The fact that you don't want to trade really makes me afraid of a Crystal Paladin on my triple blocker lineup. <laughs> so let's, that let's see. That would not be a bad play. That's we does, said oh. teleportation Ooh. to mana. <laughs> okay. And run out another Aqua Hulk. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm an idiot. Go ahead. I'm getting these blockers on board, but like, you're drawing a lot of cards over there. Uh, Aqua Sniper to mana, and I'll just end there. Alright. We'll send Immortal Baron Vorg to mana. We drew this off the Aqua Hulkus, but I wasn't thinking about what mana I tapped. Oh, yeah. So that's unfortunate. But, uh, you said Crystal Paladin would be a pretty good play. Ah, uh, no! In fact correct that it's yeah. a pretty good play. That, that is a pretty good play. Get all those blockers out of there. This is a quite scary field to be, uh, staring down right now. Um, and you have two cards in hand to boot because I just stalled you out while you were drawing. Yeah, so the Deadly Fighter can't attack because I'm an idiot. <laughs> But, uh... Yeah, this could have been a little bit worse looking. I, I guess we don't want you terror pit in the Crystal Paladin, so Crystal Paladin will attack shield more. Yeah, well, that makes thinking, sense. I was like, if you hit a spiral gate, I want to maybe force you to spiral gate the Paladin or take an extra shield, but that's honestly just not worth it. I think I just take the extra shield at that point. Aqua Hulkus yep. going in. Yep. Aqua Hulkus is going in. Oh, okay, that helps a little bit. That will be a terror pit in the shields. All right. So, uh, yeah, this doesn't work on Evos, but I'll take out Crystal Paladin, of course. Sure. And go ahead. Let's draw. You can just run out all of those blockers again. I do have to play Darkness Mana to do so. That's true. I I will do just that. I will run out my blockers. Because even if you teleportation me, I still have, like, the Consolation blocker. Even though it doesn't feel great. But if you Crystal Paladin me a second time, you know what? I'm I'm just impressed. I kind of wanted to hold on to this. I think we just want to develop our board as wide as possible this turn. Yep. So we're gonna unicorn fish the hunter fish, mm -hmm. tongue twister, and then we'll we'll play an immortal baron Borg. Okay. Deadly fighter is gonna go in at shield five. Um. So you have two aqua hulkuses that can attack. You know they're probably gonna attack anyways. So I will take it. All right, aqua hulkus. Go in at shield four. Yeah, I will block that one. Aqua Hulkus is going at shield four. And I will block that one. All right, go ahead. I will draw. Zagan, Knight of Darkness to mana. Two for the Hunterfish. Five for teleportation. 
Oh, that's He's gonna annoying. stall the game out a little bit. Uh, unfortunately, I can't leave you with the deadly fighter. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's a bit too awkward, unfortunately. Yeah, so we are gonna bounce the, the Vorg and the deadly fighter. All right. Just so you can't... I just don't want to be in pressure of uh, you just throwing a bunch of things. Or, right. uh, you uh, removing my blocker. I don't have to worry yeah. as hard about. Go ahead. That's a draw, right? We will play Immortal no. Baron Borg. Are you going to tap four mana? No! Four for Armored Blaster Valdios. Oh, this is not looking good. Armored Blaster will go in at shield four. All right. Not a terror pit. I like that. Obviously, yeah. uh, the next attack is dumb, so go ahead. I'll draw. The blocking is for Coward's Gambit. Failed last game, I don't think, or two games ago. don't think its success is going to be very likely this time. Okay, so I know you have the Deadly Fighter in hand. We are going to do three mana for Aquahocus, and we're going to draw a card. That's not a terror pit. It's like not a that. terror pit. I do have five for Core Isle. Okay, that's and I something. Will, yeah, I'll Core Isle the, the Baldios, so you can just like put it in your hand and so figure out how to do it. Which one am I drawing? Yeah, so you get to so decide the order. Realistically, the way this matters is if you have discard, and I think I'd rather you discard the Baldios, actually. So, so Baldios yeah. on top? Valdios on top, yeah. Got it. And then, uh, yeah, I can't do anything, so I will end. All right, we'll just run out the Deadly Fighter and go ahead. Okay. I will draw. Yeah, I could have, like, played the Vorg this turn also, I guess, actually. But I didn't want to give you the chance to, like, Death Smoke and then put out a blocker. This is kind of a funny one. We're going to do two for another... Not a shield. <laughs> For another blocker. <laughs> okay. And then I'm gonna do five, and I'm gonna core isle <laughs> the unicorn fish this time. Okay, okay. That's Knowing reasonable. that you can't do anything else, and that the deadly fighter will have to kill itself. Actually, this, this, is, this is some next level plays here. We are going to unicorn fish, and unicorn fish can bounce any creature, so I'm he gonna can. bounce my own deadly fighter. Yep. And uh, then pay one mana to replay the Deadly Fighter Braid Claw. Go ahead. No idea, by the way, why Unicorn Fish can bounce your own, but Coral can't. Such a weird thing to me. We're gonna pay two. We are going to Spiral Gate. <laughs> Again, it kind of feels bad because I know that you're gonna summon. Well, hold on. Actually, if I bounce the Unicorn Fish. And you summon the the Baldios, then you can't win. I'm thinking you could do both in one turn. Then that way you would lose the Deadly Fighter no matter what. But then I have to worry about that Unicorn Fish. I think I actually am going to bounce the Unicorn Fish. Okay. And then I'll end the turn. Make sure I can just at least confirm a kill here. <laughs> <laughs> Quite honestly, I think I'm actually going to make the same play as last turn. I, I'm going to Unicorn Fish, bounce my own Deadly Fighter, yep. and then replay the Deadly Fighter. Trying to avoid I, honestly, losing creatures as much as possible. Yeah, it's probably but... the right play. All right, let's draw. Hug. What do I want to do now? I know you're holding like the Evo, but now it is at the point where if I don't get rid of all of your stuff, you are threatening to just top deck teleportation instead of yep. playing Valdios. <laughs> uh, that was actually, well, I, I guess I played Valdios. I can still kill a blocker and then top decking bounce isn't good for you either. Mm -hmm. Even at no shields against a deck like this is just a pickle. <laughs> Yeah, because honestly, like, I have to start going in at some point because just the fact that you're playing so much bounce makes it, like, if I don't go in, I'm going to... You're going to tempo me out at some point. You're going to have more bounce than I have blockers, essentially. There's, like, a couple cards I really would have liked to have drawn, but I have to really start thinking about going in. But, like, if I do go in... It, like there, there's a I, trigger. I said I weren't running triggers, but there is Spiral Gate, obviously. Yeah. I, I honestly, I probably just have to play the game assuming you don't have a spiral gate. But at the same Maybe. time, I could give you the teleportation, which kind of, that kind of stinks. I mean, I could, you know what yeah, I could I mean, do? You, you have to play to your out. Sometimes you just assume that my shields are like four deadly fighter brain right. claws, which 
considering one's on the board, that would be a particularly bad assumption. I mean, Honestly, a tough spot. It's a, it's a funny one, but I need to, to do something that's going to let me put tempo on the board, and it's going to make it so that it's not GG if I give you a shield trigger or a teleportation. So here's what we're going to do. It, it feels not great, but we're going to do it. It's a, it feels like the best thing that I have. I'm going to play six mana. I'm going to play the Terra Pit that I was trying to save for the Valdios, but unfortunately the draws on the deck yeah, were not I, enabling I it. thought you might have been holding that. Yeah, so we're, we're going to do that. Then we're going to Spiral Gate the Deadly Fighter. Okay. Just to get you on nothing. Now I do have three yeah. attackers, so I have you on a two turn clock if this works out. So uh, if you have a bounce, I want to at least get the Core Isle. So I have some removal. So we'll go in with the Aqua Hulkus first. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Core Isle continues. Uh, that's good. And Core Isle continues. What on earth am I looking at here? <laughs> Not the Spiral Gate, that's for sure. Well, you know how I said assuming my shields were, were filled with Deadly Fighter Braid Claws was a bad idea? Yeah. Uh, that was all a ploy. <laughs> The Deadly Fighters oh, are God. coming to town. They are coming to town, all right. Oh, there they are. <laughs> and uh, we will arrogate the Aqua Hocus so I don't die. Yep. It's not letting me target for reason. Yeah, this game stinks. Okay. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, I'm going to draw a card. I was really you wanting to top deck... Uh, yeah, I, I wanted to top deck... Uh, bait for that so i could like kill something with it but uh we are gonna play try to draw something with aqua Hulkus. um well you're not slamming down crystal lancer i like that i'm not slamming down crystal lancer which is uh <laughs> not not great i feel like it's uh it's not looking great i'm gonna pay four mana for crystal memory okay uh i mean i have to i have to take it <laughs> spiral gate <laughs> Oh, another blocker. Another I blocker, but I mean, e either way, if you got the removal or the evil, you got the removal or the evil. I, I, I do, as a matter of fact. I, I feel like there's no shot that you don't, but I mean, that was my best shot of winning, was well, going in like gonna that. We're going to play Immortal Baron Vorg and evolve it into another copy of Armored Blast. Yeah, and uh, that and is four attackers. One of these will get through. And one, two, three, and four gets in. <laughs> Oh man, that was a fun game, actually. What, what were your last shields? It would, like, it, was I close? Or was I facing down, like, spiral no. gates? Uh, weird a card. A card. Okay, yeah. No. no, actually, uh, one of the shields, so the first shield you hit when you went in was a spiral gate. Oh, really? But I didn't want to give you the core isle back. Yeah, like, that's, that's why I went in with Aqua Hulk is first. I was like, okay, I can still spiral gate on my turn, and at the time I didn't know I'd be drawn into three deadly fighters, but like I knew I could have deadly fighter and immortal Baron Borg, and so I thought like spiral gate your attacker, play out some creatures, and hope to draw things. And you just hit two deadly fighters in a row, and it was okay. This is a thing that's happening. <laughs> Uh, that, uh, one, one card in your hand, was it, was it removal or just, like, a creature, the last one? Uh, it, it was a, it was another creature. Okay. I had Vorg and Valdios in hand, and then I drew another Vorg. So, what I really wanted was, uh, I had this in my hand, and I had the blocker, actually. And I drew okay. the crystal memory. But what I really wanted was to draw, like, the Horrid right. Worm, so yeah, I could do yeah. blocker, Horrid Worm, Evo, and then, like, kill something. But I actually wasn't playing Crystal Lancer in this deck. All right, let's, uh, let's, I mean, we, we've seen the decks for the most part because, uh, I mean, we're playing with kind of given lists, but we can, we can put it out anyways to kind of right. talk about them for a minute. So yeah, I, I kind of mentioned in my deck profile that like Water Darkness, it kind of became like the most popular deck later on down the road, but it wasn't like, it didn't reach the height of popularity. So this is kind of like the earlier version yeah. of it. There, there uh, were people r running it. Shout outs to whoever read all of Lee Sando's Water yep. Dark articles. And that's it, like that's exactly what this deck is, was from Lee Sando. Yeah. And, and uh, it, it, it kind of got- This is what I was playing too at the time, Water Dark. Yeah. 
it got more popular later on once Emerald came in because then that enabled a little bit more consistency and it gave you a legendary you merfolk. Play merfolk too yeah. yeah right now we can't really play merfolk in these decks because we only have core i guess hyper squid walter is not like the greatest either <laughs> oops yeah so your evo line was looking at what oh my gosh that was three yeah, the, the, this is it i've got three valdios one crystal paladin as my uh evo lineup quite fortunate i drew the one of in this game yeah yeah very fortunately now i was this a mistake that hyper squid walter is a cyber lord and not a liquid people no that wasn't a mistake oh, okay you just I, put I it just... next to the aqua is and i was like oh maybe yeah, that, no. that could have came up but it did not no i i, I just wanted the the card draw effect I, I mean tempo decks and kaijudo were all running aqua seneschal i think this is right. playable in decks like this oh yeah it's, it's definitely not bad because like realistically like you don't have that many good turn three plays if you don't have the aqua Hulkus. right it's like because this exact list is running like oh or unicorn fish for spiral gate like it's pretty easy to protect the hyper squid walter yeah and, that makes like, sense Honestly, even there's some motivation to like kill the humans instead of him anyways. Yeah, that is true. But anyway, yeah, this is what I was doing. It's, it's a few changes from the list to add Valdios and more humans. And I, I don't think I, I just snuck in the one Crystal Paladin. I, and honestly, it proved its worth. Like yeah. Crystal Paladin is such a strong card. For sure. Like it, it, honestly, anything at this point that can take out more than one card at once, like to get you that plus. Because we don't really have, like, Searing Waves yet. We don't have, right. like, too good of board wipes. So if you can just get rid of... And also keep in mind, this is at a time when people actually play Diamond Cutter decks. So if you're up against that, you have, like, the win con right there. Like, <laughs> uh, Honestly, that's a big reason I wanted to run it. Because it's like, if you spun Diamond Cutter, this is just <laughs> an absolute blowout of a card. Yeah, it's so good against that deck. You just set them back so far. But just like the tempo, we saw episode one how much damage the unicorn fish can do. And now Coriole comes in and it's like the same thing, but just like the older brother, essentially. I think just like any kind of deck that's putting on tempo is pretty strong right now. Although it's, I actually think Coriole is probably worse than unicorn fish in this deck. Yeah, because you tend to be staking on like a lot of the, the lower mana stuff. Yeah, like so I, I can see that. Generically, Coriole is a better card, but like in a list like this. Like, just the card advantage doesn't matter, the lower mana right. cost does. Yeah, yeah. Where, like, in my deck, for example, I would never put Unicorn Fish right, in when I right. have access to the Core Isles, the Teleportations, and the Spiral Gates. Like, I don't I don't need it. And the Aqua Sniper, I guess, is, like, my super Unicorn Fish. Uh, Aqua Sniper can also set up some blocks where, like, you're bouncing your own creatures to do cool Yeah, you could, you could, like, bounce your own Core Isle in something else. Like, that's not bad. You could even, like, in weird situations, you could bounce two Core Isles if you wanted to. Yes. So I would say this was a pretty good matchup overall. And like we said la like earlier on in this episode, the next set is Rampage of the Super Warriors, which everyone does not enjoy that set. Because what does it change in the metagame? Spoiler Almost alert. Almost nothing. Yeah, yeah, not, not very much. So we're actually going to keep the exact same wheel from this week, but we're going to add in a couple new decks that were okay, enabled yeah. by that set. And then uh, we're going to spin again, and we're going to remove Fire Water Tempo and Water Dark Control from the wheel. So you're going to see brand new decks competing next week to see more of what this metagame looked like in the early stages of Duel Masters. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll catch you guys next time in Rampage of the Super Warriors. Peace! <laughs>